Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Advisor with Stacey Chalemi. And today we're back with a amazing individual. She has her own podcast on our channel, and her name is Kova. She is a transformational and leadership coach, and she's just amazing what she does. And she's here, and she's going to talk about a topic that's very near and dear to her heart, and it's about going going deeper and move, being able to move forward and not back. And so she's going to talk to you today, and she has some great advice and tech tools and techniques. So Kova, tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do. Yeah, so if you haven't listened to me before on this podcast, my name is Kova, and I am a transformational leadership and guide. What Stacy means by my desire to go deeper instead of wider is that I have a depth of mastery that I would consider rare, let alone for someone my age. So I'm really wanting to use this time with Stacy and whomever is listening to this podcast to really share my mastery and to transform my listeners with not just information, but embodied wisdom that can really transform their lives. I love it. Now, when can you go, go more deep and in depth when you talk about, you know, going deeper and and wider, what you mean by that? Mm -hmm. What do I mean by that? Yeah. So people yeah. who, you know, don't have a grasp of what you're you're explaining, you can give them a, a, a really in-depth, you know, explanation. Totally. Well, I was thinking about this on the my way home from my co-working space today was how we live in an environment where there's just an overwhelm of information coming at us from all different lenses. People mm -hmm. who are just speaking to the mind and just giving you more information. And quite frankly, our nervous system, the electrical system of our body can only receive so much input at one time. And frankly, most of us haven't developed ourselves enough to actually be able to not just survive in this world of more input, but to actually thrive in this world of input. So the reason I want to go deeper with you and go deeper into the topics of mindfulness and leadership development and transformation and systemic and really global change is because there is specific things that I know from almost a decade of personal development and about a million dollars invested into me to have a skill set that isn't just an intellectual understanding. It's actually something that I live by, that I model, and that's in my body because I've repeated it so many times. So that's the thing you'll hear from people like Tony Robbins, who says the same thing over and over and over again. And the people who are wanting more information, yes, it can be captivating for the mind to constantly be learning new things. And if you're not executing on the things that I'm talking about, we don't really need to be going into new information anyways. We need to get the principles and the foundation down. Right. Now, so when if you really want to grow and you want to transform, what would be some of the things that you need to do in order to you know, become the best version of you? If you really want to dive deeper into yourself, understand who you are mm -hmm. and be able to transform into a better you, what yeah. are some things you would like to you know, say to the audience that you think mm -hmm. would be ways to start? Well, first of all, go ahead and check out my other podcast episodes, because we've been talking about this at depth in a number of our different episodes, whether it be on your personal podcast or mine. But the thing that I want to really reiterate is purpose. Like there's a lot of conversation about purpose. There's a lot of coaches that preach purpose and people who are trying to find their purpose, who are on the path of seeking of some sorts. But what most people don't know is that purpose is actually an embodiment. It's something that's in your physical vessel, your body, your physical form, that is a natural inherent part of your essence. And uh, that's also the reason why we do what we do. We need to start with why, as Simon Simic says, and that is what really dictates our actions, whether we're wanting to change a behavior into the positive or get us out of a behavior that's causing bad habits and negative outcomes and a negative momentum loop is that isn't really reflecting the person or the impact that we desire to make. Right. Now you talk about moving forward. You know, a lot of people tend to live in the past and it's very hard where they feel stuck where they're at and they don't know how to move forward. They have a heavy heart. Mm -hmm. They're stuck in, in, you know, the presence, but they're not, they're not feeling good, you know, about their life, about how they feel inside, you know, yeah. whatever the may be, you know, how do you move forward when, when sometimes people feel like life's against them? Well, the first step is to acknowledge what momentum you are in, right? I learned this from Tony Robbins many years ago. This was at the beginning of his knowledge business blueprint course was before mm -hmm. we went into actual any strategy of how to execute or anything like that. One of the first things that he taught was momentum. 
And momentum is imperative for entrepreneurs. It's imperative for teams and organizations because we are either in a positive momentum loop or we're either in a negative momentum loop. And he has a really simple framework that basically dictates the momentum that we're on. And that's actually what people often come to him for is to change their momentum. And that's also what I do is I change people's direction and whether they're headed downwards in a downward spiral, creating results and outcomes and um, perceptions of their self they're not wanting, or we can change that and help them become the person, create the outcomes and the belief systems that ultimately create the direction and the movement forward to create the life and the impact that they really want to make. So I'm happy to go deeper into that model, but um, it's really helpful to have a piece of paper nearby so that you can actually get a visual, like a visual representation of whether or not you're on a positive or negative momentum loop right now. Right. I like that. Um, so when, if you're on um, a negative momentum, what are some things you can do to change your attitude so you can start looking at the positive and not focus on the negative? Yeah, well, actually, so the interesting thing about momentum, whether it's positive or negative, number one, it's it's not inherently good or bad. So the mm -hmm. mind is going to want to judge it as being a negative thing. But again, in an, in an in the truth of what it is you really are, there is no good or bad. Your perception, your subjective existential um, beingness is not judging you. You are judging you. The mind is judging you. So for starters, we have to address belief systems. And that's where most coaches will start. That's where most psychologists and therapists will start. Most thing, I, I think the important thing to note is that once we identify what the negative thoughts are, I think a common misperception is, is that if I just choose a new negative, like a choose a new positive belief that I can just imprint a new positive belief on top of the negative belief and the negative belief will, will go away, but that won't actually change the momentum loop. You actually have to go in to the experiences and the part of your nervous system, which again is the electrical system of your body. It's like the breaker in your house. If there yeah. is a part of your house that like, is dusty and full of dirt and like there's like a there's like a, a skip in the wiring basically that's preventing the lights from turning on it doesn't matter if we clean out the room we actually need to fix the wiring so what we need to do is actually go into ideally the first time we experience a situation that caused a negative belief in the first place so i'll use myself as an example i had an experience when i was child when i was a child of like never meeting my parents expectations for like most of my school career. And what I've needed to do is I've needed to go back to kindergarten and first grade and second grade and all of the grades and actually experience the moments where I wasn't meeting my expectations or my parents' expectations, feeling the shame, not feeling good enough and feeling the emotions of just the most of it was shame, honestly. And in my case, I use something called emotional freedom technique, also known as tapping where I tap on the energetic meridians of the body to actually release the emotions from the nervous system to basically get that energy start moving again. And what happens is by bringing awareness and tapping and another aspect of tapping is bringing love and compassion to our experience of reality. And what happens is it dissolves the negative belief. So for example, in preschool or in kindergarten, I can distinctively remember first grade. I was like a very vivacious, very energized little one. And um, I did something that the teacher didn't like. And I had all of these programs associated with what happened. And by bringing acceptance and compassion to myself, I basically completely changed the thoughts that I had around that, that, that experience. And that is how we actually change our belief systems, which affect our potential and our perception of ourselves. If we believe that we're not good enough, we're going to have really limited perceptions of what we perceive that we're possible of doing in our life, which affect the actions that we take and the results that we get then affects the belief systems again. So momentum, yeah. it all starts down to the belief systems and using some type of somatic somatic type of therapy. It could be somatic experiencing. I'm not trained in that specifically to actually let go of the negative belief systems and be able to imprint positive ones that stay in the energy system itself. Okay. I like that. Now, you know, for people who don't know about TAP, I know that could be a show in itself, but sure. <laughs> do you give people an idea about how to tap and like ways people could kind of release their negative emotion? Cause I'm sure when you say that, that sounds so, so um, interesting to the, a listener, like, yeah, wow, for sure. myself and be able to release, you know, that negative energy because so many yeah. people 
you know, you go through life and there are certain things just like your childhood that stick with you. And, you know, or sometimes things just happen along the way as in your adulthood. And yep. those thoughts keep rambling through your head, yep. you know, you wake up and, and the first thing that comes to your head because of your subconscious is mm -hmm. the thought that bothers you. So how do you tap into like certain, certain areas of your body and to release the, um, the negative emotions? Like give us maybe a okay. little. Easy so the, the first thing I want to communicate, which is there's a whole history to EFT. This is a clinically studied body yes. of work that's been here for over 30 years it's based off of Chinese medicine, which has been around longer than Western medicine. And it looks at the whole energy body that affects all of the organs, the glands, the entire function of the body. So our Western medicine approach has a very symptomatic perception, which is like, here's the symptom, we'll address specifically the symptom versus Chinese medicine is let's, what is the whole system and where are the, basically the the things that are preventing the system from operating, operating in harmony and symphony with itself. So it comes from a completely different mindset. You don't have to believe it as real or not, right? I'm not interested in convincing people whether or not it works. There's plenty of research out there um, that completely validates what I'm communicating. So that's number one. This is like a, a scientific, validated, researched, and effective technique to overcome what's mostly been studied is PTSD. So people have come back from war who have PTSD. I haven't gone through all the studies. That was the one I was primarily interested in. And I follow someone by the name of the holistic psychologist. Um, mm -hmm. And she is a psychologist and she looks at trauma from the lens as a response instead of a disorder. And I agree with that from my own personal story. And that's a side conversation. So yeah. when we have responses to stimulus, whether it be minor adverse events in the classroom as a child to major adverse events that happen throughout our life, we actually have the opportunity to go in and heal these things, change our perception of ourselves and our ability to create success and prosperity and relational intimacy in our lives. So it's a very important tool. So that's number one. Number two is there's a lots of points all over the body. And I'm not sure if you've ever been to the Chinese medicine doctor, but there's always these little people on the, like they're like these little mannequin doll things with all these points all over the body. And usually when you go to the Chinese medicine doctor, you use needles to get the energy systems to come into the body or come back into balance. But with EFT, also known as tapping, we actually use the fingers to breathe and to tap on the different meridians. So what we can do, Stacey, I don't think we've done tapping yet. Do you want me to show you them? And I can just like lead the audience through it. Yeah, cool. So we actually technically start with finding the sore spots on our chest, right mm -hmm. below our collarbone. And we press around and we find them. And the whole point <sighs> is to start turning on the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere of the brain. Okay. And the breath is integral in making this process work because that's actually what removes the stored energy and our belief systems are stored within our energy. So we can start tapping right on the forehead, right in between the eyebrows. There's two points right here. Yep, you've got it. And you can just take a deep breath. And then the ones right after that are next to the eyes, right on the temples. And let's just take another deep breath. Followed by right underneath the eyes on the cheekbones and take another deep breath. Wow. Underneath the nose is the next point. And again, we use the breath to start moving the emotions that are stuck in the energy system of our body. So let's take a deep breath. Underneath the lips. And I'm using my finger for those who aren't watching to gently percussively tap on these different sections as Stacy is doing as well. And then the heart space, there's tons of sp like points around here. And you'll see people who are tappers. That's one of the first places they'll go because it's the easiest to reach. Let's just mm -hmm. take another deep breath.
And then front of the ribs is the next one, which is there's a couple of different awkward points. I would say this is one of them. And I'll step a little bit back for you to see it. And mm -hmm. I'm just going to take another deep breath on this one. Mm -hmm. And you might even start to notice that your nervous system is starting to calm down and you feel more calm. Mm -hmm. And then the most awkward point is nipple height right on the sides. And there's two ways to get to it. It's the chicken wing, which I'm doing right now. Or you could do the cross arm, but it depends on the size of your chest. So it's totally up to you. So the next point is the inside of the wrist. There's technically three points right on the wrist right here. So you can just use all your fingers to go across the wrist and you can use either wrist. Just take another deep breath. And then the next point is on the finger. So right on the thumb at the fingernail on the outside of the thumb. The easiest way to do it is use a few fingers. So that way you make sure you hit the point. Mm -hmm. And just come back to your breath. Followed by the pointer finger, same exact thing. Right the end there on the side of your finger, right at the fingernail. Okay. And come back to your breath. I can already feel myself be calmer. Mm -hmm. And then the middle finger, same exact point, basically right on the side of the finger at the fingernail. Mm -hmm. Just gently percussively tapping, which is why it's called tapping. Mm -hmm. And then the only point on the hand that's not on the top of the finger is the fourth finger. It's at the bottom of the fourth finger on the fingernail side. Okay. Followed by the inside of the fifth finger at the fingernail on the side of the finger, just like that. And to finish the hand out, we kind of finish, it's the side of the hand, like the karate chop area. You can do that in a variety of ways. You can fist it. You can go like that with the side of your hand. Um, I sometimes will just like hit furniture that I'm on and just kind of hit that side of the hand. It's not one of the easier points to get to, but yeah. it does work. Followed by the top of the head. And what's interesting, when you go to the offices of Chinese medicine doctors, you'll see on the top of the head of the little mannequins, there's dozens of points. And part yeah. of that is because your amygdala, the part of your brain that is like the animal part of your brain that makes you fight, flight, or freeze, yep. mm -hmm. is right down here at the bottom. So a really easy way to, if you're triggered, which means emotionally stimulated in a way that your mind is not thinking clearly, and you might mm -hmm. not be acting like yourself, you can tap down to that section and all over your head. Mm -hmm. huh. and then we go back to the top basically we go back to the eyebrows and we start over side temples on the head keep tapping yep cheekbones right underneath the eyes. And yes, you can tap at a variety of different strengths and intensities, but it doesn't require much, right? Just like a gentle tap. So for the people who are on audio, each time Koba does this, she takes a deep breath in and a deep breath out as she's tapping different areas. Yep, and then we go right back underneath the nose. And of course, there's 
a combination of CBT, um, cognitive behavioral therapy that we use in addition to the actual tapping, at least the kind I've been trained in mm -hmm. underneath the lips. And this technique helps us complete the first step of the letting go method, which is the required mechanism we need to let go of negativity. Let's go to the heart and negative belief systems that are causing either a positive or a negative momentum loop in our life, which yes. is to feel our feelings. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't even matter if you know how to feel your feelings with tapping in front of the ribs, because by tapping on all these different meridians, mm -hmm. the stored emotions will literally start to be removed from your nervous system, right. which makes this technique extremely fast and effective. Mm -hmm. Nipple height right on the sides. inside of the wrists and on a more mainstream level while it can be used for removing trauma or negative pro programming that's no longer serving us it's often marketed as a stress relief tool which is a way to use it however inside of the thumb right in the fingernail this has the ability to completely re reprogram you oh really Pointer finger right at the fingernail. And it looks completely ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Middle finger right at the fingernail. Followed by underneath the fourth finger. And you're starting to have muscle memory, basically, by me leading this through you with a second time. It's like, oh. oh, I can know exactly where on my body I can start tapping. And granted, inside of the fifth finger, the fingernail, what I'm teaching you is the most comprehensive version of tapping there is. There are some teachers that only use the hand for tapping. But my teacher, Sonia Sophia, who's a master EFT practitioner and teacher, teaches all of the points, which is uh. what I'm teaching you in the audience right now. So let's take another deep breath. And then followed by the head. And I'm just curious, Stacy. now that we've gone through the whole sequence twice, what are you noticing? I feel relaxed. Um, I think I feel a little clarity. Mm -hmm. Um... I feel connected to myself. And I like the idea that you said about the thumb, how that could reset you. Um, I could use something like that in my life. Now, are all the different parts um, for different areas, for different mm -hmm. things? Or are they both, they, do they have similar purposes when you're tapping in different areas of your body? Yeah. That would Great question. So all the points are associated with different organs and parts of our body. And I honestly, I haven't memorized that part yet. <laughs> but the thumb is a reset. So it's kind of no, like- the, All of it's the reset. The thumb is, if I recall correctly, is for fear. Um, oh. Yeah, so first, and then there's a certain one for digestion. If I'm having digestive pain, my partner will be like, tap on this specific point. Um, mm -hmm. So all the points are associated with different parts, but imagine like going to the breaker in your room or in your house and just being like, hold on, let me click this one on and then everything turns on again. So we're doing that comprehensively across the body to make sure if there's any stuck energy, which again, our stuck energy is what holds our belief systems that are causing negative or positive momentum loops. That right. is something that most people don't know. Mm -hmm. That's when we have the ability to change our life. And so tapping is really a self-empowering tool. Granted, it's helpful to have a practitioner to do it with because they can see patterns you might not be able to see. But right. at the same tool time, like you can, if you're feeling stressed, Stacey, or if any of my listeners are like, holy shit, like I read this thing on a text message or a website and I don't think clearly right now, you could literally just tap through these points and breathe. 
Yeah. And there's further parts of this technique that we can cover, but I think this is a great place to stop for now as a way to start regulating yourself. And I also want to point out like your notice clarity. And the reason why you have notice clarity is because in something called DBT, dialectical behavioral therapy, there's a spectrum um, where wise mind is in the middle and emotion mind and logical mind are on either side of it. Mm -hmm. So logical mind is like all objective and reason, right? And then yeah. emotion is like all emotions, right? And then mm -hmm. wise mind is a balance between the two, which is intellect and intuition and listening, listening to the wisdom of our emotions. And when it comes to making decisions in our lives, in our organizations, in our relationships, things that are important to us, it's important that we have a clear mind to be able to yeah. make clear decisions. And if we're not addressing the emotions that we may or may not be aware of, that could be clouding our ability to think clearly. And when we clear it, it's often accompanied by insights. And these insights then dictate our actions and the results we get. And again, affect our belief systems for ourselves and affect our momentum. Wow. I like that. I like that a lot. Now, should someone practice tapping every day? Is that is that something that would be beneficial for somebody? I really think it depends on life circumstances. When I first started this technique, I was recovering from complex PTSD where mm -hmm. it didn't, I wasn't able to focus on anything other than reliving the trauma that I was experiencing. It didn't right. even matter, didn't matter if it was happening or not, right? And that's yeah. what PTSD is specifically. Um, mm -hmm. So this tool was super helpful in relieving the PTSD. And for some people, that might be what they need. They haven't been able to move past a certain event that might not even be conscious that's affecting their current life right now. So that's one example. Uh, another example would be enhanced productivity. If you look at the scale of consciousness, which I think I talked about in the last episode at depth, our level of awareness, which is affected by our emotions, mm -hmm. affects our productivity. So happy means that we're happy and productive. If yes. we are full of joy, man, we're inspired. We're like flowing, like ease, none, like everything's yes. getting done quickly and effectively. We don't even need to be at the office that long because we're in a high, high state. And then same thing with like inspiration and love, like things are just like synchronistic and full of miracles when we're yeah. in those states. However, most people aren't living in those environments. Some are, and You'll notice those people are more competent, they're more clear, they're more com like confident, um, they're able to get things done more effectively and correctly the first time, they're able to work with better, with people easier. Um, and then when you look at underneath those like peak states of acceptance and happiness and above, we have people who are in pride, which is I'm right, right? And then yeah. we have people who are angry or sad or in apathy. And those affect our levels of productivity and how we affect our lives. So you'll see like homelessness is associated with apathy, like the belief system of I can't. Um, yes. And anger is someone who's blaming everyone for everything. It's really hard to work with people who are angry, right? Oh, um, yeah. Same with people who are sad, they, they're just depressed. And although I would say depression is a clinical label for long periods of sadness. I'm not yeah. a psychologist, but that is my perspective on healing from similar things. Um, yeah. And so we can use this tool to consistently clear ourselves and basically to be able to evolve faster. Like our operating system, our um, software was given to us not by choice, which right. a lot of coaches talk about. So I'm not necessarily going to repeat myself right now, but with a tool like this, which there's more in-depth training and how to use it and be guided in this way, you're able to update your operating system in the moment as it's happening with what life is going on. And you're able to evolve faster, develop greater and produce greater results. Right. I like that a lot. I like that a lot. Now, do you ever incorporate meditation with tapping? Mm -hmm. I would say it's funny. My my partner and I met at the EFT training. Uh, so it took her a couple of years to realize that I was using meditation underneath tapping because for her, she was just like in the emotions and accepting the emotions and repatterning the emotions. But for me, my background is in mindfulness. So mm -hmm. for me, I'm using tools such as observe observe as I am being, I am observing my circumstance of reality right now in the awareness, like at a level of meditation, you realize that you are not your thoughts, that you are mm -hmm. the one who is watching your thoughts and observe is a tool to remind yourself to do that. And we can come back to observe. And I often do that with clients 
who are like really in an emotional experience because sometimes yeah. when we go in and we go back to things that it's really stimulating hold on a second let's go back into observer you are not those experiences or those emotions or those thoughts you're the one yeah. observing it so that's number one mm -hmm. number two is to participate participate in the experience that you are observing whether that be emotionally or physically or um tactically or through sound or through smell or through taste right like we can consciously participate in whatever is happening in front of us and we can either resist it or we can allow it through. And when we can learn how to allow it through, that's when we're in the master of the universe because we're able to pivot with what's occurring. We're able to make decisions quickly that are in alignment and we're able to really step up and do what is needed of us in that moment. Right. I like that a lot. I like that a lot. Now, do you have a routine that you do on a daily basis that helps you release those negative emotions from you that, yeah. you know, will have, you know, have a lot of the things that you just mentioned, how can people can on a daily routine, make it part of their lives to incorporate some of these things that you do to yeah. help them with all those different emotions and things we talked about. Step one is just sitting. Like I'm going to be the person who's saying the same thing that everyone else is probably saying is it starts with meditation. Like we need to be here now and remember that we might not be here now first before we can even bring awareness to our emotions. So yeah. having a consistent mindfulness practice is integral to even notice that I have belief systems or an inner argument with my father that needs to be addressed. Right. So that is an awareness that can be cultivated and it needs to be something that is a long-term goal. I think mindfulness is often talked about in a way that this is an immediate solution for your problems. And there are studies that indicate that there's very quick effects of meditation. And when it comes to actually being seated in the seat of self, which is also known as the Atman, which is the awareness that is observing and participating in this experience right now, which is ultimately part of God in the first place, but we're forgetting because our mind is in perception and we are perceiving our experience of reality, but it's forgetting that it's actually part of the whole, right? So mm -hmm. mindfulness is the practice where we can start basically letting go, which we talked about in another episode, and it's one of the foundations of my work of what is in between us and actually remembering our true nature. Yes. And it takes time. It takes practice. It takes life experience to be able to be seated in that sense of, hey, I'm in the observer position instead of getting caught in life. And don't get me wrong. It's okay to get caught in life. But the whole point is to be able to notice it as quickly as possible, ideally before it happens, and then to actually come back into center. And that's how we can learn to respond to our life instead of react. That's how we step out of being an animal and actually step into being an intellectual human that has a cognitive ability to make strategic and conceptual de decisions that sets us apart from other mammals. Wow. I like that a lot. I like that a lot. I think, I think a lot of the things that you brought up today are really beneficial. I, I think they are um, really could be life-changing um, techniques that could really help people. Now, if there's, you know, for, through everything that we've talked about today, when we talked about letting go, you know, getting rid of those negative emotions, you know, are there any other things that you'd like to emphasize that you think are really important that people really need to, you know, also remember or incorporate into yeah. their lives? I'm actually going to bring us back to the beginning of the episode because you're like, what's the most one most important thing that people need to know and its purpose? Why are we meditating? Why are we tapping? Right? It's really easy to have an intellectual reason for doing something, but your mind isn't what's going to drive you. It might be unconsciously driving you to make the decisions that you're making. But if you're listening to this or if you're hearing this right now, then you're maybe opening up to the point where, wait a second, I can actually be the sailor of my boat. And that's yeah. what I'm presenting to you right now. So how do we actually change is a lot of the topics that we've been talking about. And we need to find a reason deep within ourselves to actually change, which is the hardest thing that is, I think, the, the barrier between why people change and why people don't is to find a reason deep enough within themselves to do it. So I was introduced to something called the seven levels deep exercise many years ago from Dean Graziosi, which is basically asking yourself why seven times. And sometimes it might take more than seven times, but ultimately we're wanting to get to a place where we're emotionally connected. And I'm right. not talking from the head for you intellects out there. It might take some help, 
or some real big digging and really learning to feel into your body, what your body is saying in regards to the purpose that you have. But we need to find something emotionally in you that's going to get you to show up that you're going to mind, like you're going to meditate regardless every day, right? That you're willing to tap, that you're willing to ask for help, that you're willing to take that first step really on the process of enlightenment. That's what I'm talking about right now. Don't get me wrong. I'm all for people becoming their best selves and doing what they're here. But what I'm talking about the highest levels is realizing your true nature. Um, And that can only be number one through inner drive. And I cannot force it on anyone. I've actually recently learned that um, it's by the grace of God that people have the desire to evolve and to grow. And my hope is that by listening to me, that maybe a spark has been um, ignited in my listeners to start developing themselves no matter where they are on the path. Because um, ultimately this it's it's to get out of the wheel of samsara the wheel of suffering that all of humanity has to address from being human um yeah. and and tapping into a place that is beyond our perception of reality that all the teachers call peace and love and yeah. i'm not talking the place from the mind of i love and no 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 but like a visceral experience of peace and love that many of us may have never experienced or many of us may want more of and from right. there we change the world and the teams we work with and the people that we work with and the impact that we make. And that's what brings fulfillment and meaning to our lives. Oh, hundred percent, a hundred percent. Now, can you tell people some of the services that you provide? Yeah, totally. So first of all, the best way to find me and to listen to more of my content is going to be through this podcast. So if you haven't gone ahead and press follow, go ahead and do that right now. You'll get notified whenever I release a new podcast. Stacey and I will be doing this every month, so stay tuned. Number two, listen to what I'm saying again and again. The reason we're going deeper instead of wider is because mastery requires repetition. And even if you intellectually understand what I'm communicating right now, if it's not in your body and you're not doing it, it is not something that you're ready to move on from yet. It's something to continue to work on. So keep listening to my podcast. Third thing is I've actually been a lot more active on LinkedIn. So if you search my name, Kova, K-O-V-A space O-R-E-N-T on LinkedIn, you can find me on LinkedIn and find out what I'm up to both personally and professionally. And lastly, the, the crown achievement basically of what I consider to be my life's work is a container called the Impact Program in which I hand select very high level leaders who've already achieved a high level of success, who have the capability of creating systemic change on a global scale. So I actually just invited in my first member at Burning Man this past month. um, And she's the first member of a cohort of what I call enlightened warrior leaders to not just develop themselves, but to develop each other together to create the global change that we need to move from the place of death and decay that we're currently in right now to a place of renewal and prosperity that we really know our country is capable of. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. And where can everybody find you? Yeah, you can find me at enlightenedwarriorleaders.com. And on there, you'll have the opportunity to either apply for my container, or you can even bring me on to more speaking engagements to really invoke the inner warrior out in you. I love it. I love it. This has been amazing, Kova. I really enjoyed having you on the show today. I think this is something that people really need to, you know, understand how to do. We all carry negativity in our lives. We all go through obstacles. We all have negativity, but what do we do with that negativity? You know, you know, if you hold it inside and you live, you know, and you have negativity control your life, it'll just eat you away and you won't be able to move forward. But if you're able to actually let go of that negativity out of your life and then focus on the positive and focus on the good things in life and learn how to, you know, how to utilize your emotions in a positive way, you know, so much good, so much transformation can be done, you know, so what you're doing is amazing. And I I support that. I really do. Mm -hmm. Oh, the last thing I want to say is the only way we can grow this podcast and get this message out there is if people share it. So if you have someone that you know that will get will receive value from this that could change their life, right? There's three main, le- three main levels of development. There are people who are in hell. There's people who are in purgatory, which is in between hell and heaven. And then there's people in heaven. 
and they're all going to have different varying levels of productivity and impact on this planet. And regardless of where they are on that spectrum and their level of mastery, really encourage you to send this to them. I'm guessing that there's going to be something that they can take away from this and apply to their life, no matter what stage they're at. I love it. Yes, 100%, 100%. So everybody share Cobra's message. Make sure that you follow her. And every, every month she's going to come out with a, a great inspirational message to show you how to do things, to transform your life and how to be the warrior within you. So she's going to help you bring that warrior out. And she is going to show you the, the different ways that you could become the person that you want to be. So thank you so much, Kova, for coming on this show. I yep. really appreciate it. Thanks so much, Stacey. You have a great day.